Hello and welcome to Test Your Might, episode 79, your weekly video game debate show here over at the What the Fun podcast channel. And uh, we've got a lot to discuss today. Number one, Halo Infinite's adding co-op finally. Well, oh, maybe. It's a trial period for testers, but still something. And we've got possible PlayStation slash Niantic AR mobile game crossovers that we're going to come up with. And a whole lot more. But first, let me introduce the panel. Today we've got none other than the reigning champ from last week, Stay at Home Gamer. Mike, how are you doing today? Oh, man, I am tired, uh, but I'm ready to podcast. I'm excited to talk with you guys about video games. All right. <laughs> and tell you that I did not play any this week. <laughs> so, you know, there's that. Well, no excuses. <laughs> we've got... Uh, another reigning champ from previous episodes and the reigning champ of this exact matchup before. So this is a rematch of sorts. Sean, how are you today? Hi, you can just call me Mike because everything Mike said applies to me. So we're just vibing in <laughs> the same place. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. Uh... So no video game time this week? <laughs> <laughs> uh, summer school has been uh, a drain on me. Oh no! I played some Destiny. I literally but texted no you Friday. I was like, "Hey, let's play TMNT this afternoon," and I didn't get a response. <laughs> and then I was like, "Hey!" Like thirty minutes later, I was like, "Hey, I can't play TM- TMNT this afternoon." <laughs> Still no response. <laughs> uh, well, I saw that two hours later because I was in the middle of watching uh, a movie that happened to be three hours, <laughs> and I didn't expect it to be. <laughs> Mike's over there having a conversation with himself, apparently. Uh, Regardless, there will be debates tonight and some video game talk, regardless if it was recently played or not. uh, We should list it. Uh, But first, I want to let you know, if you're listening to us on a podcatcher of choice, Apple Apple Music or Podcasts or Spotify, or you're just sitting there with YouTube open and listening, feel free to, you know, hit that like button, subscribe, rate us five stars on the mobile stuff, let us know how we're doing, write a comment. You can even let us know how you thought the debate should have gone or your ideas for different things that we discuss. Uh, It's always fun to read what you say out here on the air for everybody. Uh, Looking forward to that. So you guys, it's one click of a mouse. It's free. Like it, subscribe it. We're just trying to hit 100 on YouTube just so we can say, hey, yo, over at the What the Fun Pod. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to put all your, you know, weird numbers and mumbo jumbo in there. Uh, So it should be helpful. Yeah, mumbo jumbo. Uh, other than that, uh, the housekeeping, I didn't update, but, uh, on the, on the thing for us, but we did recently do a sleepy hollow review for the movie sleepy hollow from 1999 with Johnny Depp and Christina mm-hmm. Ritchie. That's over there on the YouTubes and the podcatchers that you listen to. If you haven't watched it, I recommend watching it first and then coming to listen to how we discuss it, which I think we're pretty high on the standards. It's a good movie. Uh, other than that, we've got ready player one, the review finally going to come out soon. Uh, we're going to be recording that sometime this next week. And then getting it out to you probably this weekend, this next weekend. Uh, that'll include Mike, myself, and Joe as well, uh, which is why we delayed it just a little while. Just because we wanted all of us to be there. It's something that we all care deeply about. And mm-hmm. um, we're going to go right into the question of the day, which is our series of getting to know us. Not video game related, but what is our favorite chocolate or candy bar of our choice? Like, our favorites, I guess. Uh, Mike, go ahead. Over to you first. Oh, man. Um, It's always been and probably always will be uh, Snickers. I love me some Snickers. Um, I like the nougat. I like the the caramel. I like the peanut there. Um, Yeah, Snickers. There's been some things that I've tried recently that, like, really do step up the bar. Mm -hmm. Um, But, like, go-to is definitely Snickers. But I think, like, one of them that is really good is this, like, it's like this Reese's has pretzels in it and M&M's in it. It's like this this bar that's like a Reese's thing. I don't, I forget what it's called, but it's so good. Um, And, yeah. But, yeah, I'll always fall back to Snickers. All right. Sean, over to you. What is your favorite candy bar or chocolate bar of preference? Um, I have like just the plain milk chocolate Hershey bars often, but um, I think partly because of the rarity, I like Kit Kats the most. Okay, Kit Kats I don't really always know. good. Kit Kats. Why? There's been a lot of good flavors of Kit Kats that come out recently, uh, for sure. Uh, that are 
Interesting. Oh, I'm a baby. But uh, the classic is where it's at, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I will fall back onto the original Hershey's. I think that's where I stand. Uh, Reese's have taken a, a large place in my life, but I think the, I think <laughs> I think the classic Hershey's milk chocolate is where it's at for me. Um, obviously, throwing in like a cookies and cream every so often or a dark chocolate, but for the most part, yeah, the cookies and cream. Yeah. Let's go. It's got to go back to that classic OG, the original Hershey's. So the chocolate. that Reese's bar that I was talking about, it's called Reese's Outrageous. Okay. And it's like it's filled with like crispies sugar and, and <laughs> deliciousness. Just uh, yeah, Reese's outrageous. Yeah, it's so I've actually tried it as well. I, I I think I remember when it came out. I tried that. Uh, it was pretty good. It, it's very oh, yeah. chunky, for sure. Uh, there's it's, a lot of oh yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah. It's it's kind of got like the consistency of a payday. Like to get through it. You yeah, know? I can see uh, that. But it. It's got the it's got more sweetness to it, mm-hmm. and then of course it's peanut buttery goodness with Reese's. Uh, well, that's what we uh, like or prefer as chocolate candy bar connoisseurs here uh, over at the What the Fun Pod. But uh, let us know what <laughs> you like. Call me a connoisseur. <laughs> <laughs> right down in right down in. Well, Mike was describing it to the T. It was good. Uh, so uh, <laughs> so let us know down in the comments what your favorite candy bar is or if you don't like candy you can say that too uh what have we been playing i know you guys haven't played anything just recently but i'm sure you have over your lifetimes played something so uh over to sean first go ahead what have you been playing or what have you played uh i've played a game (laughs) destiny's been happening destiny's happening on the weekends ish um nothing new to report there um Oh yeah, I did. There's okay. Yeah, there's two, there's two I can talk about. There's uh, one I actually played, Landlord of the Woods. Um, there was um, a game at one of the like summer sh- showcases called Birth that had like a really cool like um, like skull and bones meets like nature like aesthetic. Um, mm-hmm. And the person that made that made this game called Landlord of the Woods. Um, and you are kind of a person who lives in the city and, uh, is like done with your job basically. Um, and so you answer this ad, um, to go be the landlord of the woods. Um, and basically you go and get the weird bits of rent that people, uh, will owe you. It'll be things like, um, a bone or like, um, some feathers or like just ephemera like that. Um, and to like get it, you have to like solve puzzles to like do a good Mm. thing for them first um and it's just like really like interesting like the the vibes are really weird it's like does some interesting puzzle things a little bit um but it's short and sweet and has like a cool twist at the end that makes me like super excited about birth to see like what this creator is gonna do again Mm um so that That sounds interesting and then i've been watching people play the quarry which is amazing it looks like it's amazing to play and it's definitely amazing to like watch people play <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah i'm definitely looking that? forward to playing that as well uh i'm waiting for it to go on a sale and then i'm gonna buy the premium biggest bundle uh i think it's worth it to wait a little uh, bit but yeah uh you've been watching people play it or have you have you tried it yet yourself uh i've been watching people I, i've seen um one uh well two people they're playing together like get through it once and then um I like watch all the waypoint stuff, so I, was, I would watch them get through a couple chapters of that. But definitely fun, definitely cool. Stuff. That's that's a game that I would actually this this crew of Test Your Might, you know, and maybe even like Brian. Like I think that would be that would be a fun game to go through because I think you could do a four player co op, right? I think it's up to yeah, six. you can do or it where like two. you assign characters to a a player or whatever if you wanted yeah. to actually divide mm-hmm. it like that. They have a system for that. Yeah, they do that with yeah, the uh, that, other the other anthologies as well the um can't i'm blanking on the names but the dark, like the man the dark, yeah, the dark pictures, pictures. yeah they do that as well yeah. with that mm-hmm. um which i've played with couch potato gameplay through an entire game of it and it was exciting nonetheless because your your life is in other people's hands pretty much uh, at points yeah. and mm-hmm. i'd I had only seen the like last Dark Pictures one, um, the one in like Iraq with the vampires. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one definitely feels like the writing's a little more cohesive and like they know how to work within their budget better than before. Mm-hmm. So like this is this is kind of probably the best time to engage with Supermassive. All right. 
All right. What about you, Mike? What have you been uh, playing or played in your life? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the really the only video gaming that I have been able to play is yesterday I played Lego Harry Potter with my son. And we are almost done with Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, and that is... It's my, I think it might be my favorite movie out of the eight movies. So I think it's, I, I, it was, it was pretty fun to kind of relive some of those moments, um, <clears throat> from that movie in Lego form and Lego, Lego's always silly and, and fun. And, um, so yeah, that's, that's really all that I've been playing. I've been watching things more than I've I've uh, been been able to play, you know, mm-hmm. caught up on Miss Marvel, uh, watched Ready Player One for, you know, our, our review next week. And uh, and I'm also uh, watching through Daredevil. All right. Um, yeah. The Netflix show or the original movie? <clears throat> I don't think I will ever <laughs> grace my eyes with the original movie again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely the um, Netflix show is getting high praise, and uh, hopefully that character continues into the Marvel universe. Uh, he will. It's already it's already confirmed. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, for myself, uh, I've been playing a couple things, uh, a couple back catalog games, and then also a new ca- uh, new game. Uh, so to start off with the new one, the Cuphead DLC came out, uh, and I have been. Uh, fighting my way through it uh to to say the least the difficulty is ramped up compared to the base game it is there's a lot more going on and there's a lot more things to learn uh so i thought i was good but i haven't played it since what like 2017 when the original came out uh so i've been trying to fight my way through i lost my cloud save i guess on my original so i've been playing through the game itself as well um which is helpful because then I'm learning. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember this guy. I'll keep fighting and I'll get him. Uh, but I did originally beat it, so I'm I'm definitely going to keep fighting through and do all the DLC uh, as well. I love the game, phenomenal. The DLC is $7.99 on the uh, Xbox Network. That's where I picked it up, and worth it. Every penny is worth it. Uh, you get about five bosses, a secret boss. You get new chem, new charms, and new things to equip, new weapons. Uh, Definitely worth it. Other than that, I started playing Pac-Man Museum Plus on the Game Pass, uh, which is on just the like a Game Pass. Yeah, on the Game Pass, uh, a collection of all Pac-Man games, uh, <laughs> minus Mrs. Pac-Man, uh, for obvious reasons. But uh, it starts you off with the original, and you unlock games as you go. So you don't just get the catalog to go into; you have to earn them uh, and play through just different challenges throughout each game and work your way through, which is kind of cool. Uh, and I am seeing some games that are just terrible, completely terrible in there uh, that I have to fight through. So, <laughs> there is. yeah, and that's that was one of the biggest complaints that I saw in the reviews for that that game was that like why why is this a museum of all these Pac Man games and I literally can I I have to unlock them mm-hmm. yeah uh, <laughs> so dumb. Other than that, uh, I picked up. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on the Sega Genesis or the Master System, and I started playing that with my daughter uh, for for a good portion. I completely uh, ignore the sound effect of the drowning uh, as much as I can without getting an aneurysm, uh, and I do the water levels for her. <laughs> uh, so I'm forced to, forced to get through those. Uh, other than that, I did start playing Pokemon Trading Card Game on the Game Boy Color. Uh I just wanted to. I I don't. It's old, and I have nostalgia feels for it, even if it's a terrible game, uh, in in retrospect of games nowadays. But I think it is uh, something that deserves to be played at least once. Uh, yeah, that's what I've been playing anyway. There's an online ver. There's an online version of that now. Yeah, you could download on your PC and play like it. a newer version or the original. Cool. No, like a a newer version, the trading card game. I probably won't. Uh, I'll, I'll just stick with the classic, uh, but uh, yeah, no, that's really what I've been playing. A few old ones and a couple new ones, so that's what's good. Uh, On to the news. Like I said, Halo Infinite is going to be releasing the co-op for kind of like a preview program for 
Xbox Insiders starting on July 11th. So if you're an Xbox Insider, you can go ahead and get that started. I did not go into the Insider app yet to see if it's there, but uh, it's supposedly going to be available to try it out. Your progress won't transfer over, but you'll be able to play co-op with someone. Uh, still unclear if you're going to be able to do it over the internet with someone or just couch potato. But just nonetheless, to be able to try it after its release was almost, what, eight months ago. It feels like almost a year we've been waiting for it. So it's good to see that they're having some kind of beta to even try it out uh, is worth it. Uh, how do you guys, you, Mike, you're going to pick it up? Are you going to gonna get in that insider or no? No. <laughs> You already beat the campaign once um, you're done. I, I've, I've already beat the campaign. I thought it was a phenomenal single-player experience, mm-hmm. and I just, I don't, I I think the only way that I will play that game again is honestly if you or Cicero asks me to play with them. That's, otherwise I'm, I'm done with that. I'm moving on to different things. When it is so. officially released, Mike, will you play with me? <laughs> When it's officially released, if you need somebody to play through some levels, I will gladly Spider-Man Master Chief all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> and Sean, uh, you, oh, Spider you don't play Halo, do you? Uh, or do you play Halo? No, I, I'm what I'm always telling you, I'm playing Destiny. It's the same. Thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can... yeah, Bungie it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I guess. Yeah, going back a little bit, but. Uh, yeah, no. You you gonna you gonna try it out, or are you gonna wait for the final release? Uh, I mean, probably probably neither. I don't know. I haven't. I <laughs> thought. Well, I still have time in this year. I I was going to commit to playing it because, like, uh, at least one of you said it was like your game of the year last year or gave it an award. So I still intend to play it was like me. some of it kind this of year, <laughs> but I'm failing on that front so far. So I don't see. <laughs> I don't really know. All right. Well, that's that. Um, I, I mean, t- to it, it is a shorter campaign. It's not. It's maybe like ten to fifteen hours, you know. Um, and you can mainline it. You don't have to do a lot of the side stuff. Um, so I did a lot. I did a good portion of the side stuff because the side stuff was actually really good. Um, and and I wanted to do that. Um, because like. Halo, you know, we we even talked about this before it even released because they showed like a gameplay trailer and I remember me and Justin having a conversation on it on a mini podcast that we did. Mm-hmm. But like they had those like outpost things and stuff like that and I and I think <laughs> USFI the <laughs> we were worried they were going to USFI it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um but to my surprise and um, joy, they they didn't. All of it was very unique, uh, different scenarios for each of the outposts and stuff like that. And the thing that separated it all was the grapple. Uh, I mean, the grapple shot really, really created such a... I, there's been grapples in other games, but like I feel like this was just su- such a unique style of game um with the grapple shot and and with uh you know the gunplay the gunplay is is phenomenal in halo infinite so yeah all right uh other than that we've got another little thing on the news docket here uh pokemon go's creator um niantic is and they announced an nba all around the or all world game which is an ar basketball game (laughs) I guess uh, where you're going to be collecting players and fighting, playing one-on-one matches against other people in a AR like esque game, uh, and the trailer came out, so it looks interesting. Uh, Mike, you you play basketball or used to play pickup games as well. Uh, I know Cicero's not here to talk about it, but Mike, you are lead on this one. You going to pick it up? You going to try it out? Uh, actually, no. I, I think I think Sean's lead on the NBA <laughs> <laughs> news topic here. <laughs> yeah, Sean, you gonna um, pick that up? <laughs> no, absolutely not. I don't have space on my phone. You know, couldn't do it. Oh, That's the only space reason. On I would the love, phone. I love the NBA. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have plenty of space on my phone and I still will not download this game. <laughs> um, I mean, like I was reading that you like you obviously it's an AR game, so you do have to do some walking, but mm-hmm. I know a lot of it is uh, dependent on like 
NBA stadiums too. And like, I'm, I'm not going to just go to an NBA stadium just to play this game. I'm going to, I'm going to watch the game, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, like, I don't know. It's, um, it's pretty wild. I th- I think this is a very very wild game. Yeah, uh, um, I feel the same. Uh, honestly, it's not something you know. If it is based around stadiums itself and courts, uh, it's hard to implicate that across the nation or across the world, for that matter. Uh, where well, you know, and I was I was reading too that like it's not, it's it's going to be sort of an NBA lifestyle game. So like you could go, you could go to like. You know, like Poké Centers, right? Mm-hmm. How some Poké Centers are like at a store or something. Um, well, in this NBA game, I was reading that like you could go to Foot Locker and get get stuff like like NBA like style okay. stuff you can go to. <laughs> like it's it's dumb. <laughs> hey, they're trying to break out of that mold, and I'm they're having problems. Apparently, we'll talk about that a little later. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's our news. Uh, I won't be downloading it. I'll probably watch a review and that's, that's probably it, uh, for this one. Uh, I tried the other ones that we mentioned last week, the Jurassic World one, the the Ghostbuster, the Harry Potter. I tried those and it just didn't hit like Pokemon did. It's, it's very hard to replicate that in a, in a way that's going to effectively keep your attention day in and day out, uh, for sure. And this is kind of one of those things they're trying, they're trying different things for sure, which I applaud. But I don't know about it. It's very, uh, very different. Well, there was a, there was a report that Niantic like shut down five of their projects. Oh, and, oh like, yeah, all of them were AR projects, and it's just mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. There's there's a big uh, layoff that we'll we'll talk about in one of our debate topics here uh, coming up shortly. Uh, but on to test your might. Um, are you guys ready for test your might today? No, absolutely not. All right. And uh, Sean is definitely ready, uh, for sure. I can see it in his eyes. Uh, All right. On to Test Your Might. The first question here. uh, We're talking about Cuphead, the delicious last course. Uh, I don't know if Sean has played. Mike has not. uh, But uh, Mike did some research, so I think he's ready for it. Uh, It's been out, and it's pretty difficult compared to um, the base game. So pitch me a boss of your design. And moves slash transformations throughout that fight. Uh, the wildest fight character would win, but it also has to be executable. So that means not wild land outlandish options. Uh, something that makes sense and would work. Uh, Mike, you were on last week, so that means Sean gets to go first. Uh, or choose if he would like to go first. Sean, what would you like to do on this round one fight? I would love to see Mike go. He seems so ready. <laughs> All right. The torch I'm has been so given, not. Mike. I'm so not. Oh, <laughs> uh, so I am taking your word wildest at heart. Um Cuphead is going to send a couple emails, maybe talk to some PR people, and try to get um try to get a crossover event. With Disney. And one of the bosses, the boss with this crossover event, is going to be... It's going to be Peg Leg Pete, the villain from Steamboat Willie. Okay. <laughs> All right. And uh, obviously this is Pete from, uh, you know, Mickey, Mickey stuff and, and Disney fame there. Uh, the big old uh, anthropomorphic cat. Um, and I chose him because one of his first appearances was in Steamboat Willie in 1928. And that is what I thought would be cool is that you are taking a well-known character, doing a little bit of a crossover but also recognizing and using the fact that he was drawn and he was utilized in this particular art style in in Mickey shorts, um, in Mickey episodes. Um, and so I think that the art direction, at least, is going to be easily uh, implemented into Cuphead, The Delicious Last Course. But I think also uh, Pete has several different instances throughout his 
many appearances in Disney lore here um, that, that he can, you know, that that he could show some some signs um, of of being a good and formidable boss. And I'll let Sean go a little bit here because I'll I'll save those uh, for after. All right, we got Pete over here, the uh, the cat character from Disney. Uh, Sean, what have you got on your uh, in your corner? Yeah, um, I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go fresh. I'm not gonna try. I'm not gonna bring something that's already in the art style, um, but it's gonna still go to the retro roots. Um, there was a species of fish um, discovered in the early 1930s called the uh, bristle mouth fish. Um, it's in like the like the twilight zone of the ocean, and there are, from what we can tell, about a quadrillion of them in the ocean. Um, so, you know, like a million billion of these fish, um, I think we're (laughs) going to take a million billion and they look, they look pretty imposing, even though they're small, but this is a video game, so we can adapt this to make it bigger. Um, so obviously we're going to have some mechanics with, um, a a school of fish that, um, will be morphing into uh, some different things, uh, shooting at you as things do in Cuphead in various styles of ways. Um, but think, think fish, think big nasty okay i just think it's one of those things that like you you're saying fish and you said think big but that that's not fish aren't that big you know if if we're talking about the small fish you know i don't know (laughs) um it kind of sounds like you're too all over the place with the quadrillion, million billion type of fish. And I just think that like utilizing the different iterations of Pete throughout uh, his history could could be effective in the transformations of the bosses because um, the, the bosses in Cuphead, although I've never played, I've seen many a times um, people fight them, and there's always different um, stages to them, and there's different... Uh, like even the f- even one of the first bosses, you know, was a potato, and then he becomes a carrot, you know? And uh, what... <clears throat> what Pete, I believe, could do uh, here is... Um, he could be... He could be one of those uh, types of, like... Um, I remember episodes of him having like a, having like a cigar or whatever, and he's, he's like smoking it. And what could be his attack there could be like, uh, smoke rings that he like blows at you. Um, that could be one of his attacks. He could also, as far as the steamboat Willie, uh, peg leg Pete, he can be on a steamboat and maybe this steamboat, um, that he is chasing Mickey in the original, uh, in the original short, but here it's kind of attached with a little bit more of a, of an arsenal, uh, for attack, uh, against Cuphead. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I even think of, I even think of like some of the, some of the stuff that Pete does within like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse and how you could utilize that because I'm, I'm a father. My kids watch Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Like Pete just has a different, you know, different iterations that, that could be utilized for, for his transformations. Makes sense. It definitely makes sense. Sean, back at you, uh, one more time and then I'll call it. Yeah, sure. Um, so I think you know, Cuphead, from what I understand, you know, got phases boss, and I'm like kind of platforming to dodgy. It's almost a little bull helly, depending on like how hard you're getting. Um, how how bull helly does Cuphead tend to get, Justin? Uh, at times, there are a few bosses that shoot uh, rapid shots that you have to dodge. Uh, by slightly oh. shifting left and right, so there there are there are moments like that. Uh, it is not. But completely that it's more about uh precision accuracy with movement gotcha gotcha okay um well here we, we start with um you know there's like levels leading up to the boss and you just have like dodging swimming fish kind of jumping out of the water individually as like individual threats then you get to this boss um which is going to be you know um kind of like a bigger version of one um and maybe it's like the mother fish of some sort um and it's kind of like diving at you with its like big big old gross mouth 
um, try and you have to dodge it that way, and then, you know, you take care of that, um, it goes down, and then the school of fish that are its children kind of um, form into um, Wishiwashi the Pokemon, you know, they school up and they get into, a, like, different forms that they can then try to attack you with um that you have to dodge um that could also they could break off and like throw pieces of of their fish collective at you to have to dodge that way or you have to dodge like swipes there's a lot of things there's kind of like infinite possibilities for these game creators to think of of how to get all these fish to thematically wrap into what they want things are usually like foodified um so i can see um maybe some like um some grilled version of these fish having to like come at you for some reason um but yeah, I think I think there's just a versatility um, to just kind of a, a, a school of fish that you can work with, um, while also being one of those like weird opportunities to accidentally learn from a game um, mm -hmm. that I I tend to like. You know, I learned about where giraffes live from Cruising World. Don't want that to happen, but it did. Things can happen here. <laughs> All right, so jeez, both of these options are really good. I do like the Disney crossover. Uh, but I think this fish concept could work really good. Uh, I do, I do see it happening. It, it translates well. Uh, Cuphead has been used in vehicles, you know, planes, a sub is nothing different. If he's under the water, he's in a sub and it's the same thing. You're fighting like that. Uh, and the, uh, I'm, I'm picturing more of like a, uh, Finding Nemo when the, the school of fish were shaping and making signs of fish and different options, like different shapes together as a collective and throwing themselves out at a time. Like you said, I think that would work really well. I think, uh, translating, uh, on the next gen, like it is now would look really good, uh, with that art style to see all those fish moving independently, but as a collective as well. Uh, Sean, I think you get that one. That's a good one. As much as I'd like to see a Disney all crossover. The fish. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, all right. On to the next one. Uh, this is about Niantic. Uh, the creators of Pokemon Go, obviously, we've been talking about them a little bit, uh, are seeming to struggle to find their next big hit. Uh, so it's your job to pitch Niantic because uh, apparently you guys work at PlayStation now and uh, you have your own IPs under your belt, your collective IPs, uh, that you want to pitch an AR gameplay game. Uh, that makes Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, for mobile um, to Niantic and use one of your own IPs and sell it like Pokemon Go did or try to make something that's better than what they have recently been coming out with. So, uh, Mike, it's up to you. If you'd like to go first or second, uh, your decision, what would you like? I'm definitely going second. All right. The torch has been handed yet again. Uh, <laughs> Sean, round two is yours to start off. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Fly Cooper. Um, the Thievius Raccoonus. Um, <laughs> a lot of the Etta games, like at least the ones I know of, are you going around and like collecting stuff. Um, but also their like original thing is more on the like the geocaching side of things. Uh, like finding interesting areas and um, like collecting information about them or doing some kind of uh, location there, maybe doing some learning, but also like doing some kind of gamified thing. Um, I think that's a uh, fun, um, although legally dubious. Um, I'm sure Niantic has great lawyers at this point though, um, is to um, have areas around the world that players will identify um, where it might be fun to imagine a heist or a caper of some sort. Um, and, you know, have a game situation where there is a situationally, locationally relevant, um, quest of some kind of, like, stealing or escaping, et cetera, et cetera, um, with cool animal people, uh, heist crew. All right. People have been clamoring for another Sly Cooper game. I know that's, that's a... Big hit for fan bases. And then these are animal people, not animals. These are animal people, yes. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> All right, Mike, back at you. What have you got? We've got the uh, the thief, Sly Cooper, over here. Uh, I'm going to sound like the biggest hypocrite. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. Um, Niantic should do an MLB The Show AR game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, pitch um, it. Why, uh, but, why would it be better? 
than uh, what they've come out with previously. Th- than the NBA one or Sly Cooper? Because <laughs> I could argue Bo- both. Both, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, the thing with the MLB The Show is that um, not only can you implement the the lifestyle stuff that you know the NBA one that they're doing uh, is is in the works with, but what I believe that at least the M- MLB has over the NBA. I'm going to start with that because I, I know that's kind of where they're going right now. So I'm just going to start with talking about that. I think MLB is probably the better choice because there's more history in the ballparks than there are in the NBA stadiums. I mean, you're talking like Fenway Park. You're talking Wrigley. Um, you're talking, you know, you're talking all these famous uh, stadiums. Uh, that I, I mean, even even a newer field, but is but is very very famous, uh, is Target Field in Minnesota, stuff like that. I think there's just more history when it comes to the MLB. Um, but um, going on that geocaching side that even Sean just mentioned was like, I I think people get more of a of a thrill kind of visiting the ballparks around the world instead of like you know an NBA stadium or stuff like that. Um and I think that what makes an MLB AR game a little bit more functional than Sly Cooper is because it is based on kind of like real world things. Um whereas the AR game that is Sly Cooper you're kind of you're kind of like it's not as approachable because you it, it feels like you have to have some sort of imagination to really really bring these heists to life um within this AR game and I feel like that what AR games do best right now especially looking at Pokemon Go is the best example of it it, it is that collecting aspect and also there's not a there are definitely a lot of like parks that are MLB stadiums and stuff like that but there's also minor league places that you could go to and there's like movie historical baseball diamonds such as like you know and I an, an hour or two away from all of us right now is the Field of Dreams fields. Mm-hmm. I just saw it last year. You know, there's there's those types of fields as well that you could go to. Um, and yeah, I just think that it would work pretty well. All right, some strong hits coming out of Mike's uh, round over there. Go ahead, uh, Sean. Yeah, um, so the way you're pitching it, maybe it's because I'm on the outside of it, but the, the, re- the return to each field, it sounds like you're not going to make a bunch of money off of this because people are going to go to each field like maybe a co- couple times at most, maybe a few times. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and then it, these are like distant things. Like, yeah, there's an hour or two. Maybe there's like four that are within an hour or two of me if we're like stretching the importance of a, of a space. Um, but if you're looking at more of this high scenario that I've presented, um, one, all those things count great you can have events um at any time there's a public gathering in a big place um two um there is a um not rich but um these people don't tend to be rich but they do tend to uh spend what they can as much as they can for quality um which are like um like the furries <laughs> because you're getting the animal people um and then you are getting this idea that um, early Pokemon Go hit and also um, uh-oh, ARGs hit, um, that, heisting, that heisting goes into perfectly because there was kind of like a conspiratorial like and like gather together aspect happening at the beginning of Pokemon Go. Not, conspiratorial is a little bit of a push, but like with a little bit of a push again that the game could provide with like the scene setting. Um, it could definitely get like those things where people were like gathering together to do missions um and sometimes like you know going to places that maybe they shouldn't have been initially um and again that's where the legally dubious thing comes in but lawyers they can get deniability easily easily enough you can like get the mindset that people were in an early pokemon go and like exploit that maybe not the the best term but you can use that and like push that into like a really cool gaming experience and like a a mindset that people are going to be in already for arg games all right mike 
Yeah, I think with your thing, it just it kind of goes into uh, once again, like you you have to have a good group of people to really, really get the best and and get get the most out of such a game. Um, like I could certainly imagine us here at Test Your Might, you know, the crew here, like really having a good time with that. But I feel like I feel like those events get brought down if you don't if you're not necessarily if you don't have a good group that would really, you know, buckle down, focus and just have a good time with that. The one thing, you know, you talk about community events, the one thing that um, the MLB MLB the show the game would do it would bring back those pickup games again. Like I remember, I remember going to the park with nine other nine other friends or whatever, and just playing baseball. Um, nine, ten other friends and playing baseball, and that's just something that is that's just something in the art of going outside and touching grass that has been lost. You know, like just those those types of meetings and I can imagine that even like the AR game like when you're playing that pickup game maybe you have your own avatar or something like that and and those avatars you you get you know apparel and you get um costumes outfits for them by visiting these major league ballparks and then you could bring it to the small park here um and you could kind of like share your stats with other people maybe maybe you do play more pickup baseball and you and you share your stats with your friends and you know you show them hey uh this is what i got you know and stuff like that and and this is the squad that i'm kind of like putting together here um because i see my friend like uh, i see my friend that's playing outfield right now and i could like scan him and like see see how he's playing ball and then i could and then i could create a nine player team in my game and then go to those you know what pokemon go would do would be those gyms but like go to my maybe a baseball diamond or whatever that has you know quote unquote a gym and face your nine guys off with their like power levels and with their with their abilities against somebody else i think that this just has a little bit more real world functionality and plus if we are talking about making and selling millions like if you have an official license behind this game, such as MLB, that's going to make you more money than Sly Cooper. All right, I'm going to give you each one more sentence to either defend yourself or or criticize the other person. Uh, and that's it. Uh, Sean, go ahead. Your last <laughs> final sentence in this debate. Uh, win me over. Uh, it's a, it's a, a close-knit race right here. Uh, this is pretty good. That scanning stuff sounds way too expensive, comma, and, (laughs) (laughs) and, um, big budget properties do not guarantee big budget outcomes. Check Hogwarts Legacy. All right, Mike, final sentence. Feel free to use, uh, commas or semicolons or anything you would like. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the problem with your hogwarts legacy or your hogwarts I was the wrong AR... game i meant the hogwarts ar game. yeah I know, the, and AR. now you're yeah, confusing yeah. me yeah, yeah okay i didn't mean to back to my AR original game. sentence yeah, 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 yeah sorry sorry you can start over <laughs> the pr- the problem with your harry potter point there is that it didn't focus on the collecting and because MLB has the collecting aspect within it, it would perform better. Okay. Good usage. Um, even with uh, the punctuations, I liked it. There was an and there. I, I, I know it. it sounded like I put a period. Oh, no, there was, there was a end, nice but, pause. I, I figured there was, there was just yeah, an uh, and. Yeah, if you put uh, an and, it's fine. It's fine. I, I like the punctuation being announced next time. Mike will learn, <laughs> learn from the best year. Uh, all right. So... <laughs> Mike, you've got this win. There's, there's, uh, I've got to give it to you. I, I've never played MLB the show, but listening to you talk about going to the diamonds, bringing back your characters or what you earn, uh, back to local diamonds that you have, uh, taking your team with power levels or stats and taking it to a diamond and, and fighting. I think that's all, uh, the biggest point you had was the realism, uh, to it, uh, like, sure, it's great to get a group together and set up these events to go and do things. Uh, but if you're hosting those 
always on big major th- get togethers, then you're missing out on the real life aspect uh, that AR is supposed to add to. Uh, so like, that's why Pokemon Go thrives is because you've got those events in person, but you also have in-game stuff that you can add to those in-person events. That's what makes it good. So going to a game, watching it, scanning something, and then enjoying the rest of the game is where it's at. Uh, I like that a lot. Mike, MLB the show for the win on that one. Uh, that is 1-1. One, one. On to debate round three. I don't know if you guys are going to play this. I know I am. Uh, this is going to be a fun one, and I hope it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy. So Stray, if you guys didn't know listening and viewing, is a game made by Blue 12 Studio, and it's coming out... Uh, in like two weeks, uh, July 19th, it's going to be out here. It stars a realistic feline as the lead character in, I'm um, guessing, like a post-apocalyptic or uh, no human-esque environment. And you're playing solely as that cat, unraveling a mystery. Uh, sounds awesome. Sounds interesting. Unique for sure. Uh, looks great um, from what I've seen. Uh, so it is your job. I get this. It is your job, panelists here today, to pick what animal they will focus on in the next title uh, from this company of Blue 12 Studios. So it's not going to be a cat. You can't use a cat. That's out of the running. Any animal that is on this earth, you can choose. Which one would it be? And Mike, you won that. So that means, Sean, you get to choose. You want to go first or second? Or are we just going to keep passing the torch, comma, period, and <laughs> exclamation point? <laughs> All the punctuation. Yeah. <laughs> Question Look, mark. I didn't know how. <laughs> I, I figured it was just going to be like a clause in a, and a, one extra, it but I wasn't sure. That's why I it was specified. Great. It was great. Yeah. Um, Comma. And. <laughs> uh, yeah, mine's going to be about a parrot. Um, so, one hit. Yep, exactly. Um, because. Um, Talking the colors, and uh, importantly to my my idea, the lifespan. These things live up to like fifty years, and that's gonna be pretty important to this to this uh, the story that we're hitting here. Um, but I'm thinking a parrot that you know was uh, taken taken as a pet, um, and was released so- for some reason or another, as ha- ap- happens sometimes. And uh, let's we're gonna go back to the city again. There's gonna be a, a parrot living in the city, and you're gonna be. Paired and, paired and um out there and we'll see we'll see how that goes what kind of animal you got going mike all right i'm just looking up something here first and then so we got a a parrot uh that names. partially talks uh, i'm guessing because it was house trained at a time so i'm sure it talks a few lines here and there uh but uh doesn't speak fluidly anyway that's good. I like yeah. that. Uh, Mike, dude, are you ready? Um, to v- I think I'm going to be ready, but to vamp here a little, do your parents still have those birds? Uh, No, oh, unless you're talking to Sean. Mine. Uh, no, I'm talking to you. Uh, Trouble <laughs> was uh, the parrot, the Mexican redhead uh, that we had, and uh, it passed maybe like a, ma- a year after we moved. Uh, so no. I mean, oh, okay. Uh, I Unfortunately. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Those birds always yelled at me when we walked into your house. <laughs> anyway, um, so if you guys have listened to me talk on Test Your Might at all, you know that one of my favorite things about video games is the movement and the way that your character, the thing, the person, thing, animal, whatever you are controlling, how it feels within the video game. And so that is why I'm going with a spider monkey. (laughs) I'm going with a monkey, Um, not necessarily making him into Spider-Man or anything, but I think that what would really be cool is just to have like, also listeners, if you also know this about me, I'm a huge fan of Kung Fu and Kung Fu movies in general. And so what I believe would be an awesome game would be I mean hopefully this doesn't nick me in the points but I believe that strays like kind of like a detective cat Um, but like maybe like a detective style game with the monkey as well but more combat focused and the reason why I like this idea is because 
of the traversal. Like I'm thinking about a jungle and your ability as the monkey to be swinging through the trees, through the vines, and just like the different biomes that you could go through that would really make traversal unique and feel feel awesome, you know, to go through all of these places with just a monkey. And then just the monkey's ability to be an acrobatic, um, acrobatic style of combat. Like I, I just think about the Batman Arkham combat that could easily be implemented with a monkey as your, as your titular character. Um, I think it'd be really fun to kind of like go into the jungle, sort of personify, you know, the animals around you and really make a good, fun, like superhero type story, but with a monkey. Okay. Uh, yeah. I don't know how many cats were brought in for Stray itself, but I know they made a special mocap suit for the cats itself so they could get the movement perfect to realistic realistic you can actually look up videos of them mocapping these cats which is pretty cool uh so that is a good point i i do like it uh the kung fu you know it is a narrative experience but a little combat wouldn't hurt i'm sure it'd be fine uh sean over to the um the bird that talks slightly but uh has lots of colors and and in the city so that's 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 a plus that you got the environment go ahead yeah. Um. So I'm gonna expand on my point. So the one thing. Uh. I, well. All right. I'm much higher on Dragon Age Two than pretty much anyone else. That's like there's like dozens of us. Um. But the one thing I think everyone Just agrees that, like interacts with it at all <laughs> is that the neat thing it did was tell a story of a place over like a while. Mm-hmm. Um. And that's why I just I made sure that I picked a bird that was long lived. Um, I think the, like, cool narrative thing that this could do, like, with the animal situation, um, is add a perspective to the situation. You start with the parrot, um, like, in its natural habitat, you play a little bit around there, um, learn how to, like, make your nest, uh, how it usually interacts with the environments at home, um, then it gets picked up to be sold, um, in the city, um, maybe you do, like, a level or two, um, at its home, um, like, at its adoptive home or whatever um and for some reason or other the story hits you leave um maybe you get let go um maybe it's just like the owner dies on you um and you have to live through that um and then you spend you know every once in a while you're checking in um on this parrot and importantly on how the city is changing and developing um because anyone that's like tied to a city knows that like even every five years the same neighborhood's going to be going to be different um, so over the course of, you know, like the 30 that it might be there is going to be pretty interesting. Um, and then you have to kind of go through those same experiences of trying to like make a nest, fend off predators, avoid people and, and cars and whatever, um, terrible future thing is also happening to you as these, as these games tend to do. Um, and you're one getting that intricacy of like, Hey, this is human, human life, but also like how, what is the perspective of an animal, um, in in these worlds that we're so used to seeing. All right. So, uh, in your game, there are human people uh, around, or are they all at least robots? for a bit? Yeah, it's robots. Uh, there's people. Ooh, there's people for at least a bit. Okay. All right, Mike. Go ahead. Yeah, I think like towards the end of it, maybe it's like the city's empty of people. Um, but definitely at the start. Um. Or like in that that second act or whatever, where it's the pet, the pet sitch, and then a little bit after the freedom, so he's got to contend with some people for a bit. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Mike. Um, no people in my game. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just messing. But I mean, to that point, like I think that a lot of the story, at least in your game, Sean, seems like it's quite dependent on like some owners uh, or whatnot. And I just like, I think that like the fleet free flowing type aspect of just, just controlling this monkey. um, I think it kind of is a good stepping stone after a game like stray where like you are just controlling this cat and now you're just controlling this monkey, you know, in their next uh, sequel game. 
And Justin, you know, I, I caught your little slight, uh, you know, jab at me there. Um, my game was not necessarily narrative focused, but I think that within a game that you have a good, good feeling game, like as far as maybe combat or traversal, like you can have such a brilliant and awesome narrative. Like, I don't think it necessarily has to be that, you know, type of like, um, you know, novel type game or, or something like that. Um, but like, I just think of like games like God of War, uh, that had just a masterpiece of a, of a, of a narrative of a story behind it. And a lot of it was action too. you know, the way that you were, you know, how you were controlling and how you were, you know, going from point A to point B, like it was all action, but it had this incredible story behind it. And I honestly, I think that's what you can do with this type of game. I mean, it's it's been shown in movies. There's the Planet of the Apes like trilogy and stuff like that. Like not necessarily. I don't. I'm not saying that this is a Planet of the Apes movie, but or sorry, video game. But what I am saying is that like the the vessel in which you are telling this story is there. It's been done. It's been utilized in media before. And um, my chimpanzee, his name is Jim Pansy. Um, shout out to the Grumpy Monkey uh, children's book uh, <laughs> series that my kids love. Um, so Jim Pansy, you know, he's just this, uh, you know, trying to monkey trying to create create peace and you know help uh, you know solve mysteries or whatever that he has to do around his portion of the jungle. Okay. Um, geez, this is a good one as well. I like the parrot aspect. I like the spider monkey chimpanzee aspect, uh, <laughs> chimpanzee, uh, curious Kung Fu panda chimpanzee. Uh, interesting. Ah, jeez. I, I think what won the argument is the fact that, um, we kind of, we kind of, expanded on what stray is going to be or what it's supposed to be and we made it even better and i think that wins mike this debate i i think uh he has that narrative aspect but he also has a little bit of combat uh to to reel in a different crowd but still keep that aspect going uh another thing is that uh there are no humans in stray from what i can tell <laughs> uh so I think that don't, it's a new property. There's if, probably humans. Yeah, if, if it's a prequel, sure, but then it would uh, the fifty years would make sense. But I, you didn't it, say it had to be the same universe. You said it was a new it's a property. Well, it's the next big hit after Stray. And so you were gonna, believing yeah. Mike a lot. Like my I, my envisioning was Prologue Jungle Act One. You start headed <laughs> fine, and then after that, the majority of the game you are out in the open, which is what I stated. That's fine. Mike can have the win here, because other things you said, that's a valuable criteria. But I just think, <laughs> as said, the things you're knocking me out right now, unfair. <laughs> All right. Mike, uh, you got the win, uh, period. Uh, on to the blind fight. Uh, this is your chance for redemption uh, for you, Sean. So, this blind fight was uh, mentioned to me... Die. A long time back. Uh, this was back when I was on an episode with uh, Charles Jr. and Cicero. That was a, a while back. Uh, he mentioned something after the, after we were done recording, and I want to use it today. So this is a shout-out to Charles Jr. If you're listening, this one's for you. Um, okay. So what is the better game? A free-to-play game or a triple-A game? And uh, okay, Mikey won that one. So Sean, you get to decide which one you would like to fight for and which one you would like to uh, defend. Or that's the same thing: fight out, fight against, or defend. So, which is the better game: a free-to-play game or a AAA title? Uh, I'm gonna go with free-to-play. All right, Sean has chosen free to play. That means Mike, you get triple A to defend and fight against free to play. Uh, go ahead, Sean. You are up first, if you would like to, or you can hand over the mic to or hand over the mic to Mike to start off. <laughs> uh, 
Uh-huh. We, we've been podcasting for this long, and that joke has never happened. You're welcome. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going first, Sean? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, hmm. I think what triple A's have going for them is great story. Um, you know, good narrative. Uh also also good combat, especially especially if it's a game that has uh, been iterated uh throughout like a series or something like that. Like I think uh, I've never played them and they are downloaded on my PlayStation, so don't yell at me fans, but the Last of Us, like I've heard so many instances of how The Last of Us Part Two had just had better combat and just like better feeling, um, you know, with with mobility and stuff like that when you're utilizing the characters. Um, so I think there's just better iteration. Um, I heard uh, even Horizon Forbidden West, you know, had that uh, over uh, Zero Dawn, you know, stuff like that. So I I think that with AAA space you those developers are allowed and given the time um, to put in the effort to create just an unforgettable experience, both gameplay wise and, um, and narrative wise. Um, and honestly, honestly, I'm going to start off with this, like with, you know, against, against free to play games. I think what AAA games do, do have going for it is that they are not so dependent on microtransactions. Now I will give you, I'll give you that, you know, I'll give you that, um, like games like Apex Legends, even though they have microtransactions and they are free to play, they actually do and they actually have facilitated a strong narrative and story behind it. I totally get that. But at the end of the day, like, I think what free to play, um, has, has against it is that it's driving force to be popular to be in the cultural zeitgeist is those microtransactions is those uh you know season type things whereas i think you have the triple a games they give this they give credence to the developer that they can invent or create and come up with this amazing story amazing gameplay and then it gives gives them the creative freedom to say, "Hey, this this kind of little story thread deserves some DLC." So I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out a full DLC, you know, just to complement the original game. Um, I think AAA's got it a little bit better than than Free to Play's. All right, Sean, go ahead. Yeah, I think you're envisioning of AAA as this uh, huge free creative space is totally backwards um when i think triple a i think disney um and how like they bring in like totally creative people and then they totally put a stranglehold on what they're actually allowed to do with all of that money when you do triple a when you pick up a triple a game you have very particular expectations of what kind of a game you're gonna get it's gonna have a little bit of action it's gonna have high production value it's gonna tell you that it has a great story and a lot of people might think that it is pretty good um but it's never gonna hit like the heights of an indie game and most free-to-play games aren't really either but it's almost guaranteed a triple a game is going to be held back um at many points because of the production team that needs this game to make all of its money back because so much money is being poured into it on the other hand, you have free-to-play games, which can be literally anything. You've got Pacross games, you've got uh, Fortnite, you've got League of Legends, you've got um, all the like the Bejewels and stuff like that. Um, you have uh, Genshin Impact. There's just a whole like breadth of genres and like different ways that one, you get play experiences, two, you get people interacting with each other, and three, you actually get people playing for the game. And yes, it skews a l- it skews towards some exploitative things. But um, that isn't always the case, and even when that isn't when that is happening, like you still get kind of cool games out of it. Um, and when I'm thinking of memorable things, um, I don't know. Like AAA AAA games can often get a um, like a set piece to be super memorable. But when I'm thinking of like things that have actually stuck with me, 
AAA games, it's pretty much only the end of Last of Us. Um, whereas with free-to-play games, I get stuff like um, the persistence it took me to play Pokemon Macross. I had to play for literally a year to be able to beat it without paying any money, and like that's stuck in my brain forever. I know like pretty much every I like remember the story of me going through that and like like my meta story. There wasn't a story really in that game in particular. But then you also have stuff like Grand Blue Fantasy, um, which does have really good writing and characterization for its uh for its characters in a way that like because of the way it's doing it doing it and because of the way it like ha- it actually has time to build out stuff because it's constantly been iterated, it is doing the things that you claim AAA does, where it's taking like a cool side character or side story and expanding upon it a lot because of all these events that are happening and all the like little characters they eventually have to give them story because they're kind of around and they want people to want to go back and grab them again when they're in the gotcha pile. This is good. Uh, great points on both halves. Uh, Charles Jr., thanks for that question. Uh, Mike, go ahead. This debate's rocking. Yeah, I mean, I hear you on that, Sean, that like there, you know, with the free to play games kind of gives you a level of creativity that um, hopefully uh, that most AAA people, you know, don't have that creative overlord going over them like you suggest Disney uh, would be, you know, as like a as an as like a equal you know, like a, a parody to like an Xbox or something. And so let's look at that. And, you know, Xbox, Xbox has those developers under their belt that are creating AAA experiences and they have not put a hand into any of those experiences. Like I think of Starfield, I think of Redfall, maybe they're talking about like, how do we get this game on time or stuff like that? But they're okay with delaying something. They're okay with letting, allowing these creative freedoms with, you know, Todd Howard and the team or, you know, on Starfield to let the game breathe, let the game be ready when it does release. I mean, we all know, we all know Bethesda's curse. It's the game is always buggy when it ever releases. And I think that under Microsoft, it is it is kind of giving this like sense of like relief to the Starfield team and Todd Howard that like, Hey, we can maybe get this game out polished and not too many game breaking bugs or anything like that. I think that like, you know, even if you equate Disney to Sony, like, so like Sony is not listening to the very, very vocal, probably minority, I would say, you know, people on Twitter that saying, Hey, release God of War Ragnarok right now, right now. Like Sony's not like on Corey Barlog and the team at Sony Santa Monica be like, Hey, you guys just got to release this. Like, so although, although I will give you the fact that I believe that AAA studios step on the developers a little bit too much. And we have seen cases of that. I will give you that. I will. I do think that there are positive interactions between the, you know, the AAA publishers and their AAA developers, uh, you know, underneath them, such as in those two examples that I've shown. And I think the biggest thing with free to play games, and I will still go back to it, is not necessarily the microtransactions. I'll, I'll even I'll even gloss over that for a second. You mentioned a game of like League of Legends where I know for a fact that there are certain metas in those types of games that if you are not continuing and playing those games all the time to f- either fit into the meta or or in League of Legends case paying money to get the next character that could fit the meta i think there's ger- that there is just this this level of um approachability that is not fun with certain free to play games whereas triple a games and uh, and to be honest and you know I'll, I'll bring this up front as well triple a games especially those that hit game pa- some a service like game pass 
Like there is this level of approachability that says, hey, I can go into this game without any guilt free of like paying, you know, 60 or 70 dollars for said game. See if I like it and then I could stick with it. And if and if it's something where like it's not going to be a day one release, like on the PlayStation side, well, God of War Ragnarok, I know I'm going to like that. And I know that I'm going to shell out that 70 dollars and experience something phenomenal. Whereas you just don't get that experience when it comes to free to play games. All right, Sean. Um, you definitely get experience. Like I've I've talked about things that have been phenomenal in free to play games, and I think one of the reasons I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend too much time on the offensive because that's that's a losing thing. Um, but the thing with League of Legends is not the problem. With League of Legends is not what you're saying it is. It's the um, it's the learning target, and you can get all the champions for free. But the reason you can jump into any AAA game very easily is because they all are very similar, and that's the thing. It's maybe not exactly the story that's being stepped on, but it is. You're not going to find like a AAA game that doesn't have a significant amount of combat in it. You just aren't. And it's stuff like that where like you're going to have a similar play experience in like a different world, maybe a couple different buttons, and like the movement is a little bit different. But AAA games are so incredibly similar that that's why that's the only reason that you can pick one up all the time and like know that what kind of game you're getting as opposed to free to play. And where free to play is more of a thing is because you're getting that variety of games that I'm talking about. And yes, some of them do last a long time, like League of Legends or some other things. Um, and that can have the burden of knowledge coming onto you. But plenty of other games like Picross has been the same game for millennia. However long Picross has been existed, however long we've had numbers and boxes, <laughs> <laughs> Bejeweled, you're not going to have like a super high meta for that. Like it could be there, but you can like read a forum. Post oh, it's there. In a minute. <laughs> it's there for like, and you could figure it out in a minute. Be like, which character should I get next? Oh, I found out. <laughs> Great. <laughs> It's it's like easier than anything to get into it. Um, yeah. I just think right. the versatility of the free to play model is makes as a as a whole like biome of gaming better than AAA gaming as a biome. Wow. Uh that's this is a hard debate to choose uh for sure. Uh, I wish I didn't have to make the choice, but alas, I am the judge and I have to make a pick. I have to pick one here, and uh, I would I would like to say for the majority of this fight, uh, I was on the AAA side, but I I think Sean did sway me unfortunately for you, Mike. Uh, I I feel like he defended points very well uh, when it comes to the microtransactions. He defended uh, that games are are constantly getting updates uh, so that they're working on them and keeping them fresh and. Uh, Really, spending money is the option. If you enjoy this game, you want to support them, you're going to spend money. Uh, there are a few outliers on both sides. You know, you've got games that are worked on for years and are terrible. And then there's also the free-to-play games that are all about microtransactions and making money. So those are kind of null. Those two arguments kind of take each other out. I think Sean wins this with a free-to-play. Um, scope of gameplay might be better, uh, you know. Game Pass is, uh, in a sense, what we're doing. Yeah, we pay, pay monthly, but we are trying those games for free and not having to shell out the 60 bucks, the 70 bucks, and then, uh, if we don't like it, regretting our decision. You know, we don't have to worry about that. I think I put up a formidable argument, but I am definitely on the free-to-play side. All right. <laughs> oh, we're in agreement. Well, that's fine. It was, I, concede, it was... I didn't talk about animals, so I feel like I lost. I know you can have it. I refuse to tie <laughs> and play this and tiebreaker and lose there. I'm just kidding. Let's do it. All right. Um... <laughs> All right, so that's that's two two then. Uh, we we are going to have our prices right rules uh, for a final sudden death match here. Uh, if you if you haven't listened or you haven't watched us before, uh, our prices right final game pick debate is uh, I pick a game at random or one that we've talked about today, and they have to list the out of a hundred Metacritic score without going over. Uh, and. Uh, if they go over, then the closest one wins. Uh, if both of them go over, that is. And uh, yeah, so the game of choice today uh, is one that was slightly mentioned, I guess, in a sense. But I forgot about it, and I want to see what you guys think it is for a Metacritic score. This is going to be a PS2 title, yes, on the Sony side today. And it is Sly 3, Honor Among Thieves. 
What is the Metacritic <laughs> score for this game? Um, out of 100, uh, oh when boy. you guys are ready, let me know. And then, uh, uh, Mike, you can go first today. I wrote down my answer okay. before sharing. Okay. Sean, do you have yours before I share? Yeah, I got it. All right. Okay. Mike, go ahead. All right. 84. And Sean. Eight. Did you say eight or 80? 68. 68. So, <laughs> I was like, thought you were pulling my method. Uh, Mike, you are going to hate uh, yourself really 100% yeah, right pay. now because it is 83, sir. <laughs> 84 is my lucky number, uh, so I do uh, bid you farewell on the loss today. Sean won in the Metacritic score by one. Uh, Sean, anything to say to your oh fans today? I hope someone expected this. I didn't. I thought I was going to lose Metacritic for the rest of my life. So I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's that's a good oh, one. All right. Un- man. Yeah, that's, that's tough. By one. Literally, it is 83. Mm-hmm. Uh... I can't. Yeah, I knew. I knew that Honor Among Thieves. I've never played this Live Cooper franchise, but I knew that Honor Among Thieves is very highly regarded. So I was thinking like those eighty. I was thinking higher eighties, which is why I put eighty four. Yeah. So well, I I remember these games. I love them. Uh, Sean, you have hit a hit a tone in my nostalgia. Even though you might have not won that debate, uh, I want to go back and play these now. Uh, so onto the leaderboard for today. This is going to be the top five all-time animals in video games. Uh, so that could be animals that are NPCs. That could be animals that play lead roles and talk or walk around and do things that are not for their animal specific character. Um, but our top five animals, Mike, are you willing to type today? Uh, oh yeah. Okay. I got you. All right. You go ahead with your first, uh, what are your three top five all-time animals in games? Yeah, so um, I am going to choose a Pokemon, but I am going to lean more towards the like the animal-inspired ones. Okay. Like, I'm not going to choose like Alakazam, an ice cream you know? cone. Like, that's <laughs> yeah, or like so. I am going to go Charmander because he's basically a lizard. So, um, yeah. Going with Charmander. Um, Char Char. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so this is really hard for me because listeners, before we recorded, Sean challenged us to try to get some more animals instead of personified animals within video games. And I just said no. <laughs> and so I was trying. <laughs> I, was, I was trying my best. <laughs> I was trying my best um, to get there. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I feel like he's not overly personified, so I'm going to put him on here. Um, and that is the Super Monkey from Super Monkey Ball. <laughs> I love those games. Um, so, yeah, he's he's sort of more just like a monkey. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Super Monkey Ball monkey. Um, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, what's his name? A I I A A I I A I A I. I think that's right. I, if I am correct right now, um, yeah. My age, my age is not a uh, among me apparently. Is it I I? Is it A I A I? I'm serious, like feeling right. that's correct. I haven't played it, but I'm pretty confident. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're confident, John. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um... Super Monkey Ball character list. <laughs> Let me let me think of another one here. It is wow. AI you AI. Guys... It is correct. I am correct. Okay. <laughs> Amazed right now. The filing cabinet works. AI. <laughs> All right. So, uh Sean, why don't you go with your 3 while I think of a third one? Okay. Um Seif from Dark Souls. How do you spell that? S I F. Okay. Uh the Pomeranian from Tokyo Jungle. <laughs> Pomeranian. Tokyo Jungle. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with the fox from Persona 4. 
I, I have to get this honorable mention out to Demi Legato, my um uh, from Pokemon Moon. Um, but we don't need two fire Pokemon here. All right. Um, I will start off with my animal <laughs> NPC that is an animal and is an NPC that shows animal like traits and does not speak or walk around on two legs. Uh, that is going to be Spot, which is what I called him, but that is the Fable Dog. I've fought for him in the past and won on his behalf. Uh, Fable 2, 3, it's the dog. I named him Spot. There is no name, really, unless your imagination tells you. I put you Fable so. Dog. Fable Dog. Good. Uh, then I'm going to throw out Conquer from Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Um, because, yeah, uh, he's awesome. And uh, I thought about him. Yeah. Then I'm going to put Yoshi up there. Because I feel like Yoshi is iconic animal um, that has been made into a character. All right. I finally thought of an animal that Sean is going to be very proud of. All right. Oh. The penguin from Umurangi Generation. <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> you mean the one that you didn't know was part of your party and you were there. missing pictures? Yes, okay. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, does this penguin have a name, Sean? Uh, almost that certainly. I missed? Almost certainly. I don't know. Is it? Almost certainly. Uh, is it I I A I A I? <laughs> it's definitely not that. <laughs> oh, man. All right, uh, we'll co- we'll continue while you guys look that up. Uh, Mike, your must-have. What would you like? Uh, you've got Charmander, the oh, Super no. Monkey Pengi. Ball Monkey, and Peng. Did you say Pengi? What's his name? Pengi, P-E-N-G-I. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, um, my must-have. Okay. <laughs> um. My must-have is going to be Charmander. Okay. Uh, Sean, your must-have. You've got uh, Sif or Sylph. Uh, the Pomeranian, Tokyo Jungle. Sif. 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 The Pomeranian uh, from Tokyo Jungle and the Fox from Persona 5. Or Persona 4. My bad. 4. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to pick... I'm going to pick the fox from Persona 4. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to put this one up there because I feel like he deserves to be up there. And you guys probably won't fight for him. Uh, and that's going to be Conker. Uh, I feel like he deserves to be on a leaderboard somewhere. Uh, he's got a great personality. He's funny. He's got <laughs> one-liners. Witty. Uh, has a bad personality, I guess, in a sense. <laughs> this uh, is a family movie podcast, Justin. Uh, it's just a name. It's a it's a it's an animal. Uh, all right, yeah. All right, what are we fighting over here? He's not, he's not calling you out on whether. Yeah, I'm not calling you out. I'm calling you out on Conquer being on a family friendly podcast. That was it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we put That's Conquer in a in a final death match setting, like t- what is it, yeah, team death match? Probably. Or? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure yeah, he's come up before. celebrity death match before. <laughs> oh man, Conquer's funny. Yeah, he's got to um, come back. I feel like out of this list, probably Yoshi's the most iconic. Like, for me, it's the Fable Dog, but Yoshi is up there. That's that I did say that when I said you know he is debatably one of the icons of animals in video games. Right? He he started off as just a friend uh, that you rode, and then turned into his own character and grew his own fan base. Sean, you gonna replay the Persona games when they come to Game Pass? Just to see Fox. Maybe three, uh, because I didn't play the, uh, like the, there's another version of three. I only played the original. There's another version of three that I'll play possibly, um, but I won't play the other two. They're too long. Um, and there's stuff I don't like thematically about them, um, which will probably still be true about three, but, um, I want to yeah. like, Um, so Pangy's pretty awesome. He just stands there. Um, <laughs> gets, yeah. Gets I, I'm not going to go to for right, so I'm not going to go to bat for Pangy. I will go to bat for literally anyone else on my list. Both Yoshi <laughs> and Fable Dog, right, are willing to die for you so you can achieve things. They're willing to sacrifice themselves so that you do whatever you need to do in your life. 
You know, and okay, not, I could give you Yoshi, but I can't give you Fable Dog. Look, if you <laughs> want, will, he, if you he, want a loyal companion who will, uh, you know, fight for you and your honor and your name, nothing gets it better than the big dog with Pangy. a sword in his mouth, Seif. <laughs> yeah, but Yoshi, boss, but everyone Yoshi has to IBS, right? Cicero said Yoshi has IBS. So, why would we want? Uh, <laughs> why do we do? Are we just? Oh boy, nope. <laughs> 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 Wait, so is, let me let me look up Seif from Dark Souls, and I will just tell you if I like Seif on this list based on the images. Okay. Are you ready for this? <laughs> I can't believe I'm putting up three dogs. From Dark Souls? That's wild for me. <laughs> uh, but the Fable Dog, you, you wouldn't say it dies for you? Like, you literally have a choice to save the people to to save your dog or to save like, or to get all the money. Like, you had three options. And you I mean, Seif does like Seif is loyal enough; it doesn't have a choice. Like, it's do it's gonna do it for Artorias because it's yeah, it's but, that but loyal to it. It's that loyal and that badass. The the dog will help you throughout the entire game, just like Yoshi does. That's why I'm fighting so strong for these two because they both assist you throughout gameplay, not just in key moments, but also throughout like your entire experience <laughs> that you have them around. They're there helping, getting you things. You know, the fable dog will think... find you stuff that and fight enemies. And it, and I don't think Yoshi we should be defining the, the epitome of animals just on how helpful they are to us as human beings. Because <laughs> honestly, Charmander is really Justin. helpful. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but also, I will be honest. I'm not going to consider fable dog over Yoshi. Like. All right. Um. I'm like I will I will 100% give you Yoshi and I got to be honest Seif looks BA enough that I'm okay for conceding Pangy and Super Monkey Ball Ball. But dude. I want I, I want Pangy on there. Like <laughs> 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 the I love that alone. game. I don't even want Pangy on there. <laughs> All right, no no penguins on the leaderboards. It's a rule. Okay, Yoshi and C are our options then. Uh, Dark Souls and I'm, of course Yoshi. I'm unless unless Sean wants to talk about the Pomeranian, but <laughs> I, mean, I what, would you rather I could no, Yoshi make, I could make. <laughs> uh, I already put Yoshi on. Okay. There. I would 100 percent argue Pomeranian over Yoshi just for the hilarity of it, but I can't find the little interstitial cutscene. That made me love this Corey, this uh, Pomeranian so much. Um, so I'm gonna have to just allow Yoshi to be up there, um, not too begrudgingly. Yoshi's a great, a great pick. But all right, would you rather have uh, Steve or would you rather have? The I, would, I would rather have Steve. I'd rather okay. have Steve. Okay. Um, okay. All right. But... Uh, so that is our leaderboards. Uh, in no particular order, the top five all-time animals in video games. We have a Charmander. Uh, we have the fox from Persona Four. We have Conker from Conker's Bad Fur Day, Yoshi from multiple titles, and Seif from Dark <laughs> from Souls. Yoshi. Yeah. <laughs> Yoshi. Can you do a Yoshi? Either of you? His. Russell. No. 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 That... no. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, that's our show from the What the Fun pod here. We've got Duck, myself, Mike, and Sean. Sean came out on top tonight by th- one point. And, uh,. That's our show. Hopefully, you why, guys did, why did I ever come up with this uh, Metacritic stuff? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. Cost you the match. Cost you the match and your throne. Sean is the um, leader. I think he beat you twice now. Um, recently, anyway. So, I don't know. I right. probably should play Scorn. Uh, guys, anyone listening? Yeah, go play Scorn. Uh, I'm not playing Scorn. It's not even out. <laughs> not yet. All right. <laughs> What you, well, how are you ending this podcast? All right, we're we're gonna end it. You guys have a great one. Thanks for watching, listening. If you're still listening, make sure you hit that like button if you didn't already, and the follow and the subscribes. Go ahead and do that for us. This was episode seventy nine of What the Funs Podcasts. Test your might. Thank you for being here for this long, and see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.